the first topic which we are going to do is introduction to signals and their classification. First of all, what is a signal? A signal is something which gives you any information which is relevant for achieving a particular goal. It means if you have a system, in the system when you provide a signal which is also known as a reference input or an excitation, you get an output which is technically known as a response. In whole of this subject you will come across response, you will never use the word output. This response is the output which the system is giving for the corresponding input. Now, signals are classified into two categories primarily. The first one is continuous time signals and the next one is discrete time signals. Continuous time signals are those which can be plotted with respect to time and discrete time system is something which is existing for a particular instant of time. The value can be anything. This is a discrete time signal and it is denoted by Xn where this is n. This is a continuous time signal, this is a discrete time signal. Continuous time signal can be expressed as a mathematical expression. As for example, the above waveform is A sin omega t, where A is the amplitude. So the continuous time signal is expressed mathematically as a sin omega t and here the discrete time signal it cannot be represented mathematically except of course it can be written in the form x of n is equal to 2 this value 1 again 2 1 0 minus 1 and 3. Now how to know that which value is pertaining to what number of n there is an arrow which is kept here, which indicates that it is for n is equal to 0. Sometimes in the question it will be specified that n is equal to 0 is a uh, given and sometimes just the arrow is there. So you should make, make it out that the arrow pertains to n is equal to 0. So this is how a discrete time signal, a random discrete time signal has been expressed. And this is the basic classification that in a continuous time signal, it can be expressed mathematically. Discrete time signal can be expressed in value form or sometimes when it is a uh, uniform type of uh, values, then we can ob obviously express it as UK or something else. So next uh, move, move on to another classification of signals. The basic continuous time signals are unit impulse signal, unit step signal, unit ramp signal and unit parabolic signal. All these signals are interrelated to each other. That we will see later on. First of all, let us do what is a unit impulse signal. It is denoted by delta t and is represented as the value 1 for t is equal to 0 and 0 elsewhere. You will find a representation of delta t as this is the y axis. Value 1 is written here at t is equal to 0. And except this value at t is equal to 0, rest places the value is 0. That is an unit impulse signal. A unit impulse signal can be perceived as if there is a very, very large value of force or there is a very large value of energy which is getting transmitted over a very, very infinitesimally small interval of time. Now let us suppose that infinitesimally small interval of time is represented by epsilon. So this epsilon can be viewed, I'm magnifying it and replotting the value of delta. This interval is epsilon. 
it starts from minus epsilon by 2 to epsilon by 2 and in between there is origin which is O. This interval epsilon and the area under the curve being unity dictates that the magnitude of this impulse here is 1 over epsilon. As epsilon tends to 0, 1 over epsilon tends to infinity. So basically, a unit impulse signal is a even signal having very large magnitude at very small interval at infinitesimally small interval of time. So a unit impulse signal is an even signal having very large magnitude at infinitesimally small interval of time. Sometimes you will find this signal as a wrongly being represented as a 0 epsilon and 1 over epsilon in many of the books. I tell you this is a wrong representation. It is because when on a system an impulse signal is applied and this system is an LTI system. Whatever output you obtain, the same output is obtained if you apply delta of minus t. Thereby dictating that an impulse signal is a even signal. And this representation is that the impulse signal is neither even nor odd, which is a wrong representation. So this is how you will represent an impulse signal. This is what it means. And this is how you will define impulse signal. 